Hi Stampers. Wow, it's been a while, hasn't it? Sorry about that. I don't really have an excuse. Well, I have a thousand excuses, but I'm not going to give them to you because, well, I have a theory about excuses. We won't go there either. Um, but I'm going to thank you. I'm going to show you a really, really cool card today. It's just beautiful. In fact, here it is. Are you ready for it? This is a fall card, a really nice fall card, but it's not just a card. It's a fun fold card. Isn't that cool? Why? Well, you know, because everybody can, everybody's doing cards, just normal cards, this kind of cards, you know, it's just something a little bit different. So I just think it's cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make that. And before I show you that, I'm going to show you that I've made the same card using the fern um oh my goodness it is called oh, forever fern bundle okay same thing designer series paper uh, and then just to prove a point that you can do this with a whole bunch of different things i use the sunflower bundle also to do the fun fold so Let's get to it right now. Excuse me while I flip this down. There we go. Okay, so here we go. Um, I'm going to be giving you measurements, but I'm going to have to put these on my website for sure because... There's a lot of, it's a little complicated. You'll see. So you're going to start out by wrecking everything. You are going to start with a full sheet of paper. Pick your color. I am using Cajun Craze because I think for this particular card, that's just a great, great color to use. Okay. Um, because it's going to be a very fall card. I'm using this Life is Beautiful stamp set. I'm using Versamark ink. I'm using Cajun Craze, Old Olive, and Crushed Curry are the colors that I'm using. Um, oh, and Early Espresso. Um, I, you know, I know that you don't have all these same colors, and I also know that you can improvise because we're crafters. And we're really good at improvising. So you should be watching me on www.nettypstamping.com. Um, there's a host code for October. If you make any purchases in October online, use this host code. Um, my website, I mean, my email is nettyp2020 at gmail.com and when you place an order the easiest thing to do is to go to nettyp.stampinup.net unless you're on my website and then you just click order here either way we're getting way way too many email uh technological addresses and things and it's just confusing me to death um hope you're getting through this anyway let's get on with this so we're using this stamp set. Oh, another thing. We are going, I'm using designer paper from this set. This is the plaid set. And oh my gosh, it's in the mini catalog for, for the holidays. Last year, Stampin' Up! came out with a very Christmassy looking plaid uh designer paper this year the designer paper the plaid designer paper is so many different colors there there's red and green for christmas there is like the beautiful fall colors your golds and and things like that there but then there's summery there's there's yellow this is perfect for halloween the orange or for thanksgiving orange and black um, there's just some gray, there's some black and white. This is just gorgeous paper. This is fabulous. 
Um, I'm on my second set. What can I say? My set, second pack. What can I say? And I don't know if you realized it or not, but these on your paper, uh, select papers. You'll see which ones on my website are on sale 15% off. The plaids are one of them that are on sale right now. And so that's a pretty good deal. And to top it off, if you are local to me and you order designer paper on sale, um, I will put it in my order and I won't charge you shipping. Um, I will, if you have to come pick it up, but you won't get charged shipping. So that plaid tidings designer paper normally is eleven fifty. It's on sale for nine dollars and seventy eight cents, and that seems to be pretty much the going price on a lot of the paper. There's more information about the designer series paper sale on my website and on Stampin' Up's website. So check it out. It's a good deal if you if you use a lot of paper. And I'm gonna tell you, I know a lot of people like to buy single sheets. Um, at the craft stores and you know that there's nothing wrong with that um but first of all stampin up's designer paper is good good quality paper um but also when you figure uh the amount of of i haven't actually calculated this and i should do that before i start saying it but i'm i'm, I'm trying to figure out how much it is per sheet um because like this, this plaid paper is six by six and there's like 48 sheets in a pack for $11.50. And it's two-sided. It says like 25 cents a sheet for the small, small stuff, the six by six, 23 cents. Okay. That's, you know, you can't get it at the craft stores for that. And there's a whole bunch. I mean, this is this is all the different ones that are on in that paper. Um, this is showing the front and the back. So six. There's forty-eight different designs um, because it's front and back. Uh, it's actually twenty-four sheets of different. No, it's 48 sheets. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm confusing you. Let's drop that. Let's get on to making our card. So you are going to take a full sheet. Do not cut this in half. Pay very good attention to what I'm doing here because this is confusing. So you start with your full sheet of paper, eight and a half by 11. You put it in your scoring tool and you score it at five and a half. Score, do not cut, okay? Make sure you have a scoring blade here, cutting blade out of the way. And I'm saying that because I have cut way too many pieces of paper that I didn't want to cut. Okay, then take it the long way. Okay, so this is scored in half. Take it the long way, measure it at two and one eighth. Make sure it's an eighth, not a quarter when you're measuring. I have a tendency for some reason to go to a quarter every time. Anyway, score it at two and one eighth. Flip it around to the other side and do it again. Two and one eighth, not two and a quarter, two and one eighth. Okay, then now what you have is you have this scored here, this way, and you have this scored here. Now, I want you to get rid of this, this part and this part. To do that, <clears throat> you can cut it with scissors on the score lines, or you can try to cut it with your cutting trimmer, which to me is nicer because you get straighter cuts. I am not a very straight cutter with scissors, so I do use this. Try not to go past the fold, but you know what? If you go past a little bit, it's not going to really hurt anything. You can cut this so that that piece is completely gone. 
And what I end up with almost every single time is not quite enough. Set that aside and trim the rest of it out with your scissors. Because I'm always afraid I'm gonna cut too much. And then I ended up with some kind of jagged edges. I'm not I think I need a new blade on my trimmer. And that's why that happens. So I'm gonna just trim them off. It's this can be just a little bit shorter because it will fold nicer that way anyway. Okay. So we don't need these pieces. Get rid of them. We have this piece. And now what you're going to do is you're going to fold these pieces over. Get out your bone folder and fold them. Crease them nice. Take this piece and fold it over and crease it. Now this is your front. Now what I do with the front is I take one of my stamps. In this particular Life is Beautiful stamp set, there's a really neat little leaves. So I'm going to use that one. Take a Versamark pad. If you don't have a Versamark pad, you can do the same, get the same effect using the same color as your paper. So this is Cajun Craze. If I use Cajun Craze ink, it will come out the same. Open this up just to make it easier to stamp. Ink up your Versamark and just randomly stamp your leaves around here. Just kind of trying to get a little bit of a design just to keep this from being boring in your background. Okay. You can, I mean, if you're working on paper, you can overlap edges and do all kinds of things. And this middle, the middle part's going to get covered. So you don't have to worry too much about that. Okay. That's set. I mentioned I did a, uh, Zoom class, and a couple of people had asked me to record it and send it to them. Well, I had a little bit of trouble with the Zoom, figuring out how to get uh, everything I wanted, like how to put the spotlight on me and how to put the spotlight on what I was working on and see people and answer questions and find the record button. So it didn't go real well. Um, which is why I'm back to this again. So I didn't record that. So that's why I'm doing this again. So you can pretty much see everything all over again if you were with the Zoom class. Okay, so the next thing you're going to do, you are going to cut a coordinating color with this. Take your... Whatever designer paper you've decided to use. Now, I've decided to use this one. And then I'm using, for a coordinating color, I'm using pumpkin pie. <clears throat> You're going to take a strip of pumpkin pie, one and seven eighth by five and a quarter. I'm going to put all these measurements on my website so you can see them um, if you don't want to write them down now. But there's two, two pieces. One and seven eighths by five and a quarter. In your designer paper, you're cutting one and five eighths by five. So that's just a little bit smaller. See? So you're going to glue those. Glue your uh, designer paper to your cardstock. Like so. So I was going to try and do this on a Facebook Live today so that I could have you follow along with me and ask questions right away if you wanted to. And I could, you know, kind of chat with you a little bit. I, I just really like that idea. But boy, I couldn't get that to work right either. So 
I'm going to work on it. One of these days, I might surprise everybody by announcing a Facebook Live. We will see. <laughs> okay. These are your inside pieces. You can actually go ahead and glue them down right away, too. Glue them right there to your inside folds. And the only thing you need to worry about is that you kind of get it straight and, you know, get these two to match up. So there you go with that. I got glue on there. And now I have glue on my fingers. So I need a handy dandy wipe. You know, I used to get these at the dollar store, and I used to go through them pretty quick because I've got them sitting right here at my desk and can just wipe off whatever I mess up. My hands, my stamps, my desk, everything. Well, since COVID, you can't find the little buggers, and if you do find them, it's not at the dollar store. So they're not a dollar. <laughs> Okay, so I have my inside piece that's cut five and a quarter by four. That is your um, whisper white. And then I just cut a little snip of this. It's three quarters of an inch wide by four inches across. I do this a lot, whatever designer paper I'm using, just to put a little bit of color on the inside. Um, you can stamp a greeting on the inside if you want to. What I do, because I do so many cards, is I, I like to leave them open because I usually like to write notes inside of them to the person that I'm sending the cards to. So I don't put anything on the inside. But every now and then, if I'm in a hurry or something, I'll stamp something inside. This particular stamp set is really neat for, for that. Here's why. They have a, a thinking of you. Life is beautiful and hello. And I just think you put the hello on the outside, you can put in the inside either the thinking of you or the life is beautiful. Either one, just it's just cute. And the other thing about this is we're gonna do, we're gonna make this tree very fall, but they have little snowflakes. You can make it wintery. And the bubbles, if you put those on there, they just make it look like a floral tree. It's really pretty. Um, I've actually got a couple of them somewhere. If I could find them to show you what the different trees look like, uh, I will get them out and show them to you. But they're not real handy, so I guess I'm not. Okay, anyway, <laughs> so now our inside's finished, and we're just going to work on the front. Now, this is the fun part. We're going to take a piece of the colored cardstock. We've cut four and a quarter by three and a quarter. That's just going to be on the front for a frame or a matting, basically, for the white. So the white's where the magic's going to happen. And that is uh, three by four. Easy enough, right? Okay, so we're taking our three by four piece of paper. We're taking our tree stamp. We're taking early espresso. I'm going to ink up our stamp, and it's obviously too big to fit on this little piece of cardstock. So what you got to do is you just want to kind of put it on here to where you think it's going to look the nicest. You could kind of lean it a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right. Put it down a little, up a little. Do it on paper so you can see. The overlap is going to go off the side. You don't get it on a table. Okay. <clears throat> so there's that. And now what I'm going to do, I'm taking my three colors, Old Olive, Crushed Curry, Cajun Craze. Now, I kind of picked up the cue from this paper that I picked here. Um, this has a yellow and it has the, the pumpkin and the Cajun craze in it. The only thing it also has, and I was I, I was going to do it, but then I didn't, um, is it has rich raz razzleberry. And I thought, wouldn't that be pretty to have some kind of purplish 
uh, leaves in there too, but I just didn't do it. I chickened out. <laughs> so we're going to take our leaves and I started with the green and I'm going to tell you what I think old, uh, old olive. I think it looks best if you stamp off first, get your dark stuff on paper, then come over here and put it on your card front. Okay, um, it just kind of lightens it up a little bit. All right, <clears throat> clean your stamp off real good. Oh, wait, wait, don't clean off yet. Stamp off again, and let's hit the bottom. We're going to put some down here, too. Now clean it off. And go with your Cajun craze. I tried to kind of start with a darker and work my way to the lighter. Again, stamp off. Move your move your stamp around so it's not all in the same direction, same place, because you don't want them to you don't want to stamp right on top of the other one. <coughs> okay, and then don't forget your ground. And then the last one I'm putting is the crushed curry. And I'm just going to kind of fill in every white spot that I've got with crushed curry. Well, not every white spot, but you know, you know what I mean. Okay, and now it kind of just looks like a lot of colored leaves and like the wind is blowing. I think I need a little more of this Cajun craze up here at the top because there's nothing there but crushed curry and it just kind of looks lonely. So I'm just going to throw in a couple more leaves up there and fill it in. Okay. That's it. And then I took a scrap of pumpkin pie, which is my base color. No, not my base color. My coordinating color. And I used Cajun Craze to stamp the word hello. And then if you're talented, you can cut a little flag there. If you're not talented, you can use the Lovely Labels Pick-A-Punch, which is what I used to cut. No, it wasn't the Lovely Labels. Banners. It's Banners Pick-A-Punch to get that little flag there. <clears throat> I use that because you would not believe how wonky it comes out when I try to cut these by myself. So now you're going to take your pumpkin pie. And you're going to take the part that you just stamped and you are going to glue that. Now I got some ink where I didn't want ink on this card front here, but I'm going to cover it with my hello. So it's not really going to matter. <clears throat> I'm going to prop the hello up on some mini dimensionals. I am going to try really hard to not go so long in between posts. I really, really want a lot longer than I like to. I was having some trouble with my cable, but that doesn't really affect this. I still should have been able to, to do these okay, but it just didn't, just didn't happen. And I have some ideas for some more cards. So I'm going to be coming up with some more very soon. Okay, so I flagged this, the inside end, and I'm going to put the outside edge right even with the edge of my card. <clears throat> I am going to 
glue this on. I'm not propping this up with dimensionals. I normally would, but I think there's a lot going on with this card already because of the fancy folds. So I'm just going to glue that down. The other thing I did with this, and I think this ends up really pretty, took my holiday rhinestone jewels because they come in such pretty colors and they sure do end up looking almost fallish. Um, there's some pretty gold and some red and some green. So I took a couple of those and stuck them here and there. I used the gold and the red. Oh, I use a green too. What the heck, right? And there you go. Now, the other thing you can do if you choose, and I I haven't, the jury's still out on whether or not I like this idea, but, um, let's see, one of these, ah, oh, this one. I put the to a friend who makes me smile on the front and inside I just stamped happy birthday on a piece of this paper and then cut it out and put the happy the birthday there and nothing on the inside because I'll write my message on the inside. Um, I thought about with this one I could do hello and then do thinking of you on the inside, maybe thinking of you or something like that. Um, and I'm just not sure if I want to do that or just leave it like that and maybe, I don't know, stamp something there or or just write something. Anyway, I love the way the fall tree came out. The colors are just so pretty, so gorgeous. And it, I, I like this plaid paper. Hope you do too. And I hope you join me again next time. Again, Nettie P. Stamping. Um, coming from Warnersville, Pennsylvania. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me. And I'll see you next time. Bye.